So this is Alan. We're back to finish the Atlantis Miniatures Dwarf Female Warrior model. Uh, in previous videos, we finished all of her paint, uh, all of the paint job on her. And in this video, we're going to do the base for her. Now, my preference is usually to have a base that's rather simple so that it complements the model itself but doesn't detract from it. There's other people that like to create a very complex base, and those can be really neat to make a, a whole scene and tell a whole story with a miniature. But for a single miniature like this, it's sometimes nice to just have just a basic, simple base that uh, just highlights and complements the model itself. So there's several ways that you can start doing the base. You can glue down rocks. You can do other things like that. I just have a, a primed base. And I'm going to use this product, Vallejo Earth Texture. They have various different levels of how, gr how grainy the texture is. But this is essentially paint that has sand mixed into it. And at the scale she's at, I think this is going to make a really nice uh, a really nice texture for her base without it looking like the rocks are maybe are not quite the right size for her. So you just take a little bit of this product. I have this plastic bag on here to help keep it from drying out. But you can see it's pretty thick and it's, uh, it's got texture to it. And I'm just going to dab it onto the base, covering the whole surface. So earlier today, I actually went ahead and, and uh, applied that texture to this base, let it dry, and then applied Dubai Brown over top of it for a base coat. And you can proceed a couple different ways from here. The most simple is just to take a lighter color and dry brush over the top. And if you do that, all the different texture on the base is going to pick up that, that dry brush, the, the paint off of your brush, and it's going to just hit those highlight points. It's going to create nice texture on the base. I'm going to do one extra step that you don't have to do if you don't want to. But I'm going to glaze just a few different colors into some different areas of the base so I get a little bit of subtle differences in the tones of the, the earth uh, the earth itself. So I have my three my three colors pretty light and I'm essentially just going to just dab a little of that color around on the base. So now that the base is, is dry, I'm going to dry brush on top of this in two different layers to again create a little bit of visual interest and a little variety. So I'm going to start with Oroco, which is a kind of a mustard earthy yellow. And you don't have to thin this paint at all when you're doing the, the dry brushing. So the technique with dry brushing is you're just going to load the brush. Again, you'll notice I'm using a uh, not one of my best brushes for this. It's also kind of nice if you have one with a little bit larger head. So load the brush and on my on my paper towel I'm gonna get basically all the paint off of the brush. Now it looks like there's basically no paint left but there's still just enough there for what we need. <clears throat> I'm just going to roughly go over the base and all of that texture that that Vallejo Earth product left is going to pull what's left of the paint off of my brush. So now that the glue is dry, what we're going to do is we're going to just take uh, normal PVA glue, so something like Elmer's School glue, and we're just going to put a little bit of this around the base, just in a few spots.
and then take something like an old brush or a paper clip or I just use my tool that has a sharp point on it. I'm going to spread this glue out. I don't want it too clumped up. Just create some patches of it on your base. You can have some of it go right up to the edge of the model. And then I have a container of static grass. You can get this pretty much at any miniature supply store, uh, online, places that sell any hobby supply should have some kind of brand of static grass. I'm just going to take little pinches of it, stick it on the base, kind of pat it down, top of the glue. Knock a little bit of the excess off. I usually like to let it set for just a couple seconds. Let that glue grip hold of that grass. And then knock off the extra. And then here's the super secret tip. You blow really hard on the miniature. This does two things. It blows all the excess little hairs off that might be tucked into little crevices on the miniature. But it also makes the grass stand up. So as it dries, the grass will then be standing. It'll look like natural grass on the base. Now this is already starting to look pretty good. I'm going to do one more step to it just to add in a little bit more visual interest, create a little bit more realism to the base. Because when you see grasses and, and you know, uh, earth areas in real life, there's a variety of plants that tend to grow there. There's grass, there's weeds, there's other bushes that are starting. So I'm going to add a few little bits and pieces that's going to increase the variety of textures on our base. So this is a different type of a static grass material. These have been uh, essentially a drop of super glue and then they've put a bunch of static grass onto it to create little clumps. And they have a variety of colors so that it's darker down by the base. It looks like, um, looks a lot like a real, a real little plant or the real little bush. For this, I, I prefer to use super glue. And I just take a little pair of, of tweezers or pliers that you have. I want to make sure I don't pick, these are in a variety of sizes. I don't want to pick something that's too large because she's a relatively small miniature. So I just get one of the clumps. I'm going to pull off some of the longest hairs. And the bottom part where the, the glue was attached to the, the base. I lost, oh, there it is. I lost where I put the glue. And I'm gonna stick, just stick this on the base. I'm gonna repeat maybe one or two more times. You can use any black you want for this. Um, I tend to prefer to use blacks that were made for painting gaming miniatures. So like the Citadel Games Workshop, Abaddon Black, or the Privateer Press, Thamar Black. They tend to have a little bit more hardener in them than paints that were made more for modeling or, and um, you know, more display type miniatures. So because the base might be where the model is handled the most. I like to have a little bit more durable black around the base. And I usually anticipate doing two coats of this. So just go around being careful not to get up onto the top of the base. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed these videos on how to paint the Atlantis Miniatures Dwarf Female Warrior. If you're interested in picking up this model or any of the other models from their line, you can visit their website at www.atlantisminiatures.com. I'd like to thank Joshua Lorimer for doing the video and the production for this. And uh, thanks to, again to all of you for watching. See you next time.